today we are going to be jumping back into our all the mods world and i know i may sound a little bit off uh but that is uh because i am at the moment just slowly recovering from a severe sore throat i don't know i don't know what come over me uh but i ended up getting this sore throat and i tell you what it has been a pretty nasty couple of days uh of just pain uh but i'm back i am back and uh i think it's time to dive back into our all the mods 8 world yep and hopefully you can bear with me with my voice as uh it does fluctuate in and out um as i'm trying to get my voice back the pain is thankfully somewhat gone uh but yeah here we are so uh i am on the latest update currently and i was thinking about getting into create today and uh getting some stuff automated i went to go automate uh, some of the things that we are going to need for create and i was like you know what i think it would be awesome to go ahead and set up some of the components for create that needs to be automated um so a lot of things within create have to be automated within itself um in order to make some of the components so i think today would be the perfect day to get into that now as you can see behind me i have cleared out a rather large area and that's because create well needs a little bit of space and uh, so I have my pathway here. I got rid of my old crop that was here and uh, I cleared away some trees, got some things flattened. As you can see, still some residual trees left over here uh, or residual leaves. Uh, but this should be enough space. There should be plenty of space for any of the projects we're about to get into. Now, a question you may be wondering, well, why do you need to get into create at this point when you have just about everything at your disposal? Well, I think create is a pretty fun mod to get into first and foremost and it can do some pretty cool things um and i was actually thinking should i take my spaceship or my space station that i have and make that outer ring actually spin because we could potentially do that with the create mod but we need some tools first um and so that's why i want to go ahead and get into this i would love to be able to do some weird things like that i don't know like have some spinning clock tower or something like that you know, we could turn this into a clock and do all kinds of cool things with Create. Um, so, I think the uh, the automation process in itself is super, super fun. Uh, now, some of the things that I want to automate. Well, when we take a look at this, we're going to need brass, right? We're going to need electron tubes. We're going to need polish. All of these things require um, us to have some sort of automation. Uh, we're going to also need stripped logs, right? Um, and so, stripped logs need automated. And we also are going to need these andesite casings andesite casings require automation um and as you can see it requires automation within create itself so i think making little factories for these items is going to be definitely the thing to, thing to do oh by the way i almost forgot this is an update so inside this update um they did add some new things to the quest so when you have completed a quest there's a chance of getting some random reward as you can see i wish i had this early on that probably would help me out a lot but if I go ahead and claim everything, as you can see, there's all the stuff that we ended up getting. Oh my gosh, there's a lot of good stuff here. Um, okay. Including a mega torch, an ultimate cable. Uh, okay, some interesting things. We also got a hunter's handgun. Wow. Now, of course, getting started with create, one of the first things I want to do is, well, strip a bunch of logs. And I don't know if I can do this with a uh, vein mine. Uh, no, it does not work with vein line, unfortunately. Does not seem to. Nope. So I gotta do this all by hand, but we are gonna be automating. This is gonna be one of the first things I actually want to automate is the production of andesite casings. So I can just request in refined storage and all of this processing, as you can see right here, can happen directly because of refined storage. So I'll just send it the two items it needs as it'll need a log and it'll also need andesite alloy. It'll end up running through a saw, thus stripping it, and then we should uh, be able to also send andesite alloy at the same time. It'll run through a conveyor belt and thus be harvested that way. That's, of course, the goal. Um, now, to get to that point, we also need brass. Um, so, getting brass is going to be one of the first things I kind of want to set up uh, before this, even. Um, now... The reason I need brass is because we are going to need it uh, for the machine that actually pokes down, as you can see, the deployer here. So this is going to require brass. A uh, little bit of a setup for this, um, but should be easily doable. Um, now, to make these, 
the polished red quartz. Uh, we can do it by hand as of right now. Uh, we're gonna need sandpaper, which is very, very easy to make. And of course, as you can see there, quartz and redstone. But let's go ahead and get our first conveyor belt set up. Um, and this is gonna be where we set up our first machine, uh, right? And this is how we're gonna actually make the brass. So let's take a look at the recipe for brass. Um, okay, so it doesn't show up directly in here under create, but the brass is this material right here. And technically to make it, you can see we're gonna need a blaze burner. We're gonna need to feed it zinc and copper in order to get this working. It's also gonna require a mixer under the mixing and it's gonna need a basin. So all of this, relatively easy to make. Um, now to get a blaze burner, that's probably the most complicated part, but I have a quick way of getting this set up. So you do need to capture a blaze with this, um, but we do have a quick way, I believe if I go here and we go to our nether area, um, Fort Blaze, I think. If we go here and go up to one of our blaze spawners, we can actually just right click directly on the blaze spawner. How awesome is that? Sentient fireplace. Now the setup for this is pretty straightforward. We have our blaze burner. We can go ahead and place that down. And then on top of that, we'll place our basin. It may seem like this is a little high, but I promise you it's not that high. On top of that is going to go our mixer. And then down here, we can go ahead and link up and make our belt. Now we're also gonna need a belt over here as well uh, for the output. And technically we need a belt over here as well um, so that way we can potentially just send two different products. Um, so I'm gonna be sending over here another material, right? As you can see, just like this, this should work. Um, now, right here we have the mechanical belts um, and we should be able to just have a chest that imports and we just put the two different materials in these chests um, or barrels. I like to use barrels for this, I don't know why. I just think it fits better with create. Uh, but if I place these two things down, I'm gonna go ahead and place a barrel on top, then break them, just like that. Um, and then what I'm gonna use is andesite funnels. So if you place andesite funnels on a belt, as you can see, it directly connects. And same over here, it's gonna directly connect um, on the side. We don't wanna place a filter in here, but it's gonna connect just like this. Pretty straightforward. However, on this particular one, notice the side. So what I need to do here is I need to say, uh, you can either shift right click. If I shift right click, it's going to pull items in. And if I just right click it on there directly, it's going to pull items out. We don't want it to pull items out. We want it to send items in off the conveyor belt. And so I am going to shift right click to get that placed just like so. Grab that, shift right click. As you can see, that's gonna work. Now to prevent items from flinging off of here, if this is full, um, what I can use is a trap door. And I find this pretty useful. Um, let's go ahead and grab some spruce. And trapdoors just seem to work really good uh, because you can place them right here. And as you can see, it's just enough to get an item to stay right here in front of this conveyor belt. And uh, this is a very, very simple setup. Now, it does need to be powered. All of this needs to be powered. And uh, to do that, I'm actually gonna have my power source right here. So that way I can uh, kind of loop it around. Actually, the power source probably needs to be right here uh, because I am gonna have a cog that is right here that's gonna have to be kind of moved over one to power this up. Now to get this all powered up, I'm gonna be using a water wheel, but not just any water wheel, a water wheel that is actually on its side. And believe it or not, if you place a water wheel like this, it takes a significant sort of setup to get this to spin at its maximum potential. Uh, but if you place it on its side like this and have one water source just spinning around it, it's the same as having this crazy setup with it turned the other way which I think is kind of mind boggling, but uh, I think we should be able to place it right here. Or what I can do is I can go ahead and get the gear placement in so I kind of know where my gear is supposed to go. As you can see, we need this uh, cog and we're gonna gear ratio just like this to change gears. So the speed uh, that is gonna come from our water wheel is gonna spin this large gear, which is going to spin into the small gear, which is gonna make this spin faster. And it's just enough to make this thing spin. This does require a certain uh, speed. And you're gonna have two different things. You're gonna have speed, which is called RPM, and then you're gonna have stress units, which is SU. 
Um, and those two are the big factors in this mod. You don't normally have to deal with power. I know there's a thing in here that will allow you to use power to generate. But for right now, just with the basics, nah, we don't have to really worry about it too much. All right, so I've got this place down. And at the moment, it doesn't really matter too much on direction. I'm going to go ahead and place this right here, this block. And then place a water bucket right there. And that is going to cause this to spin. And then we can just extend our shaft up into here. And as you can see, that is now spinning. How perfect is that? Um, so, I needed copper and zinc, right? I hope I have some zinc. I definitely have copper. Uh, yes, I do have both of them. And they're both on tap. Uh, so, do I need any specific ratio of these things? That is the question. Because I want to go ahead and get them placed in here real quick. And then we'll turn and hook up all the belts to the shaft and everything and get this up and running. Um, I'm thinking... Uh, let's take a look. What does it require? Just this and this to be heated. So this this to be heated uh, just requires some coal, which is nice. Or you can use a lot of the bucket. Um, so this should work. I wonder... Will the chalice work? Okay, no. We'll, we'll still have to use just coal. Later on, automating it is pretty simple. So, as you can see, I've clicked coal in there. You can click a bunch of it on there as well to make it last a little bit longer. We're going to toss one of that and then one of that. And that should generate the output. Except, yeah, as you can see, it just place the output right there on the ground. That's exactly what we want. And to make sure that we don't have any clogging issues... Uh, we're going to go ahead and place the item that it generated in here. And now I can just feed it. Uh, I can just feed it copper and zinc. And uh, we won't have any issues with it just like having filling the whole thing with copper and, and so on and so forth. Um, and it should all work. So to connect the belts, this is the fun part. Um, so at the moment, I don't have these two connected right here in the middle. But it should be as simple as adding another shaft in here. And now I should be able to get both of these spinnings, but we may have to use a gearbox in order to do that. And so, let's go ahead and make a gearbox. This is going to not only change the rotation on the sides, um, but uh, it allows us to extend our power off to the side as well. Now, in this case, I do need a vertical gearbox, which we have to change it. And so, there we go. As you can see, it is spinning in the right direction. But if it wasn't, I would just put another gearbox right here to get that spinning. Now, uh, for this over here to start spinning, what I can do um, is I could uh, take another belt and use the belt to extend it. Or I could just use uh, cogs right here. So let me show you. I don't know if uh, making these uh, these cogs are going to let's see, actually work here, but we'll, we'll see. So I could add three cogs. And as you can see, the three cogs spinning right there. Get this spinning in the pro appropriate direction. And then, just like before, we can add something here. Place down a barrel. And then place down our andesite. And just like that, we have a functional uh, kind of brass automation. Like, it's not super compact, but it works. And that's what matters, right? Is getting our, our speed and everything rotated and, and getting all that working. So... Um, with that, let's grab some dirt. We can cover this up. Now, it's not 100% automated. Uh, that will come later on because we do not have the blaze burner automated. To get this automated, we would actually need to use something that's clicking coal onto it. Or placing coal onto it. Uh, there's a couple of different ways of doing that. But let's go ahead and get this, uh, get this done. So, copper. We can go ahead and make some of that. Love this. So, I'll just do a stack for right now. And zinc. We can do a stack of that. Thankfully, we have our essence for this. And uh, the, the other good part is once we have enough of this brass, um, as you can see, I'm putting that in there and in there. You're going to see it's going to go along. It's going to enter in, be picked up, as you can see, off of this belt. This also shows a bunch of different mechanics of how these belts can operate. And that's just going to start pumping the brass, as you can see, over here. Look at that. And now we have brass automated. How easy is that? Just got to keep in mind, make sure that we uh, make sure this thing is filled up with uh, with some coal for right now. Um, but like I was saying, now that we have some brass, we can actually make some brass seeds. Uh, that way we just always have brass on tap. And this automation won't be as necessary in the future. So it's as simple as four turidium. 
and four brass. Boop, there we go. And at least we're gonna have brass being produced also in this method. So that is pretty handy. So now getting ourselves some pink diamonds, as you can see right here, is our next part uh, to this uh, wonderful puzzle that is create. Um, I've got to kind of get these things sanded together. This is making polished rose quartz. And if you have something that helps you eat faster, um, which I don't think the gluttony uh, charm is a thing in here anymore. Uh, but if you had something like a gluttony charm, this should work. But you basically put the sandpaper in your offhand, rose quartz here, and then later on, this process can even be automated. Um, and it's uh, not super difficult to get this automated inside of a machine. Um, and I don't know if it uses durability inside the machine. I would assume it potentially does. Um, but in our case, definitely uses durability. So you're going to need quite a bit of sandpaper to do this as we sort of munch our way through. Yeah, this looks so weird in our hands. But yep, we've got to sand this down. This is going to be used for the electron tubes. And uh, the electron tubes are used for the deployers. Like I said, everything is to sort of get to deployers and to get to brass funnels because that's where the automation truly starts to take place here. Now, currently we have our brass automated and I have just about everything needed in order to go ahead and get ourselves the andesite casing automated. And that's gonna be a big deal to me is having that set up and automated. So uh, let's go ahead and do that. So what we're gonna need is a saw. So I already have most of the stuff uh, ready to go for the saw. And then we're also need a deployer. And the deployer is going to need an electron tube. And there we go. We have ourselves a deployer. Uh, and then other than that, we're just going to need some belts, right? So some basic belts. Now, I kind of want to get this set up in my head. Uh, I think another useful tool at the point where we're at would be a wrench. So the create wrench is going to provide a lot of different things for us. I'm going to go ahead and just use the plating uh, that we have available to us like this. Oop, there we go. Perfect. And there's ourselves a wrench. Now... Uh, the wrench is incredibly important. This is how you literally change a ton of different aspects of uh, this mod and change a lot of different things. You can rotate. As you can see, I can change this from a vertical to a horizontal. And, uh, of course, that breaks everything. But we can use it to rotate and control belts. Uh, and for right now, I want to go ahead and set up a belt system um, that is going to feed. And we can go ahead and start it right here. I can probably use this to even power just the belts alone. Um, so let's go ahead and create a single belt and now on this single belt um, I'm going to provide a couple of different things um, And I want this to go into a funnel and divide it up into two separate belts uh, So for right now, we will just leave it like this um, And that is technically going to need to extend through um, So let's go ahead and remove this and of course I can change up the size here in a moment uh, let's see create we are going to need our belts and now a, a, a useful tool if you want to add to your belt you just take a belt and you right click to add to it if you want to shorten the belt you just right click it with the wrench very very helpful by the way um, so what we're going to do here is we are going to send wood to we're going to send two materials right we're going to send andesite alloy which can be auto crafted and then we're also going to send the logs right because we're going to need both of those to finish out the auto craft to make the andesite casing, which we're gonna do this way. Um, so I need to split up the materials, uh, like I was saying. And to do that, we should be able to utilize the brass tunnel. Now this thing's kind of neat, this is pretty neat. Um, so what we can do is we can have multiple belts. So right here, I can have another belt that is uh, coming off the side of this one, for example. As you can see, we have this right here. But what I can do is I can have a brass tunnel that connects to both sides. So I can have a brass tunnel here and here, and all the items that enter on this side will then get split between these two, and I can have both sides filter out and only put the items that we want in here. So for example, if I'm gonna use, uh, let's see, logs. If I'm gonna use a regular log, um, I can go ahead and say, okay, on this side, only use the logs, and then I can tell this belt to only accept andesite. So we'll put the andesite in, and this side will be logs. That's perfect. That's exactly what I need. Um, and now I can have this belt shortened a little bit, because as you can see right here, um, I can kind of see where I want this to go. Uh, I need this to be a saw. We'll figure out how long this needs to be here shortly, but 
I do know that this right here is perfect for me to have a saw go in. Now the saw is facing the wrong way, so we can use our wrench to hopefully rotate this just like that. Now, I don't know exactly if this is still going in the right direction. So a good way to sort of test this is to go into create and use a hand crank. Now I'm gonna place a hand crank on this side and I'm gonna turn this. Now I don't know which direction this is actually going, but I do know that we want the whole setup to be going this direction. So if I place a log on here, hard for me to tell with the log not actually going on. Can I toss the log directly on here? So as you can see, it's going in the direction that I don't necessarily want it to go in. Um, it's also doing a, mo uh, doing a mode that I don't want it to do either. Um, which is very odd. I wonder if that can be changed. So I rotated it. And I can't get apply filter to the... Oh, so we can apply a filter. Okay, okay. So we're probably gonna have to do that. We're gonna have to tell this what direct where to where to actually go. Hopefully this is the right direction. Uh, but I do want it to do stripped logs. So let's go ahead and create a stripped log. And then we probably have to place this in here, right? With the filter out the recipe. Um, and so now I should be able to drop that on there and let's try and spin it in the appropriate direction again and see if it goes the right way. So it is going the wrong way, but it did the right operation. So I do know that this probably needs to be placed on this side right here, just like that. Um, I still don't know if that's going to go in the right direction. Um, put the filter in. Pretty sure this is still going the wrong way, but it's all trial and error for this, right? Yep, that's going the wrong way. Can I rotate this to make it not be the same direction? I guess I would have to spin this the opposite direction. Um, so to do that, we can hold shift and do this, and then it and then it goes the right way. So what we'll have to do is right here, we'll just have two cogs, and we'll make sure that those are connected here. And we'll make sure that the cogs are spinning, and that that is actually spinning in the opposite direction. So if this belt is going this way, going in this direction, this cog will then reverse this cog and make it spin backwards. So we'll hopefully get the appropriate direction here. Um, but I do need to go ahead and connect into this. So we'll have this here. And uh, this belt is going to be where our second operation happens with the deployer. Um, and so I'm going to create myself another belt. Hopefully this isn't too confusing. Um, a lot of this stuff has to happen right off the top of your head. Uh, but there we go. So this is going to end up over here. And then I want this deployer to activate and send the item in. Now, at the moment, I don't have a belt here, but what I can do is I can take this funnel and remember, I can get a belt up to here. And then I can send the items from this conveyor belt onto this. So this is why I needed to see exactly how far uh, this belt could go. So this is where I need the belt to, to reach up to. And so to do this, I can go ahead and hit this one back. And then we do need a belt right here. And so I think what I'll end up doing is taking this back one more just to here. And unfortunately it is going to be connected to this. I do not, I don't want it connected to this and I don't think there's a way to prevent it from being connected. Um, so we might actually have to just go up here. You know what? This might be the way to go. Let's extend this back out. This needs to not be connected to that. Oh man, this is all causing a little bit more problem than I was originally hoping for. Hmm. What we could do is use a, a fun mechanic of a uh, flinger, right? We can we can set up a really cool thing with this. Actually, you know what? I have a I have a perfect solution to this problem. Uh, we can use a uh, create depot, and thankfully I have played around with this mod long enough to know how to do this stuff. But we can use a weighted ejector. And uh, right here, we can go ahead, and if I place this down, um, what we can do is we can have a weighted ejector actually fling the item, <laughs> which will be kind of cool. Um, so we do need a depot, though, for this, the andesite funnel to be able to pick the item up off of. And I think I just used my depot to make the flinger, but here's a depot. And so the depot will go right here. Perfect. 
and then right connected to this will be a weighted ejector. Now I do need to select where I want the items to go with the weighted ejector. So the first thing you do is you, I believe shift right click, of course it keeps getting put in here. You shift right click, yep. And then I will place this down and notice it is already lined up. So when this is turning, the items off of here will put on here and this will fling it onto this. Thus eliminating one of the problems that we have and that is direction on our belt. That is pretty awesome. Um, now, any other problem that I'm going to encounter? I think after this, it's going to be complete and going to be making andesite casings. So, last but not least, I will place this. Oh boy, this is always awesome when your contraptions are actually working. And plus, this shows off a lot of mechanics that I've learned along my journey with Create as well. Um, and so, there we go. I'm going to go ahead and place a casing here just for the looks. Um, same thing right here. Let's go ahead and shrink this up a little bit. Doesn't have to be super large. Um, and we'll go ahead and place a barrel on this as well. A little barrel. And this is going to be where the items come out. So andesite casing just to get the items out and place the items in. And I think this is almost ready to go. We just got to power it. Now at the moment, the system is not overstressed and it's also not very fast. Um, right now, we're still using the one water wheel. So what I did was I just connected off of here. As you can see, this one thing powers it. This is spinning in the proper direction. This spins this in the proper direction, which is perfect, and also powering the weighted ejector. Um, and then right here, we have this spinning, which uh, reverses the speed again and makes the belt go the direction we want. Now, this I want to go in uh, another direction. So what I can do, uh, this actually can go in any direction. Let's be fair. Uh, actually, I just messed up my saw here. Get that place back down. And then I do need the saw to have a recipe. There we go. Um, I should be able to power this with a belt. Um, so right here, it doesn't really matter what direction it's going. And this will look a little wonky, but I just want to show that you can also use power here. Uh, you can use belts to actually power things. So um, at the moment, it is overstressed. Uh, so that means that currently one water wheel is not enough to power the whole system here. Um, and so how do we fix that? Well, we can just add another water wheel into the into the mix. So long as we're not changing the speed of everything, we can add another water wheel. Um, now to do that, let me see, where would I want this to go? I think right here would be a fine place for another water wheel. Um, and we just need to make sure that it is going to go in the proper direction. So let's go ahead and place this down. And then I like to check what direction my fans are facing and then place an item in such as grass right there and uh, then we can go ahead and place the water in and it's going to get to spinning there we go perfect the um, the max that we want now to be able to see the actual stress units you can wear some engineers goggles some goggles from create which are super helpful for that but at the moment <clears throat> I am not doing that <laughs> Uh, but let's go ahead and make ourselves a vertical gearbox and let's hope this is going in the right direction. If it's not, we can always change the direction. Um, let's put this in. As you can see, if uh, you can see just by me doing that, that this is actually spinning in the wrong direction. Um, I could make two gearboxes, but I think it's just as simple as us taking what we have here and just replacing the water wheel. So currently it's spinning... Uh, I would say counterclockwise, but we can make it spin clockwise uh, simply by just shift right clicking, shift clicking. And as you can see, now it's going to spin this way. And I'll just place myself a dirt block and then place that. And that's going to start spinning the other way. And that's perfect. So gearbox back in the same place we had it, just like that. And then we are going to connect a shaft. And that should hopefully be enough stress. It doesn't seem like it's enough stress, though. Still not enough to get this up and going. So we may need another water wheel. I think it's the weighted ejector. The weighted ejector and the uh, these two are pretty pricey on the actual stress units. So after adding one more water wheel, as you can see, everything is able to be run. And that is perfect. So that's exactly what I needed. And I'll go ahead and fill this up to make it look a little bit nicer. And there we go. So I have a water wheel just running over here. As you can see, hook up to another gearbox. But um, everything should work. 
so hopefully that's not too complicated um of course there are other power sources that i want to get into definitely uh soon i think next episode we'll definitely have that once we get this up and running um but yeah so uh is this all working and will this work now well at the moment this does not have a filter in it uh, i don't think we need a filter but in case something happens to accidentally land on the belts and uh, we don't want it to we can slap a filter on here and make sure it only picks up these items uh the andesite alloy now uh to sort of get this going um well of course we are going to need refined storage but uh let's go ahead and let's say we want andesite alloy um let's see andesite i think i have all the stuff set up there we go and then we'll get logs and we'll get a, the perfect amount 64 and 64 so two separate stacks and then we'll fill this up and as you can see it's going to take the logs and throw them, throw them over here now here's an issue here's an issue uh that i do have um because this is an andesite funnel it is only going to send one item at a time that is a problem that is a big a big problem uh we need this to actually send a stack at a time and we also run into another problem where this belt is not big enough uh to support this so there is a solution to this um that we could potentially do but for right now i'm just going to try and fix this by just using a stack upgrade and the, the way to make a stack upgrade well is to change this belt uh from a regular andesite funnel to a brass funnel and this will allow a stack of items to come out of here and that'll be perfect so uh let's take that off we don't need that there so what we should see happen is this should split just like we have set up um which is perfect but we want our 64 so let's grab our logs and we'll put that in and that in now we should see a stack on the conveyor belt which is perfect and that gets transferred that lands there gets flung up there which makes its way into here and then that gets placed and there we go ah that is nice. So now this will do this instead of us having to do it all by hand, which is kind of a pain. I will admit the andesite process was changed um, not too long ago. And I can say that it is really nice that it kind of forces you to automate this process. But oh my gosh, was it a pain to do? Like it is so, so much more of a manual pain Whereas before it was hand, you could craft it in the uh, crafting grid. Um, but yeah, this is so so much cooler that you can uh, you actually have a reason to automate these processes. Now, currently these builds are definitely temporary, so it may look ugly right now. But these are builds that are more or less to get us the items that are going to be needed um, for the future builds, right? Um, I can easily take this setup here and convert it into uh, brass casings. So right now we have andesite casings, but brass casings also exist. Um, and so I can temporarily use this for the brass casings as well. And uh, this will allow us to sort of get a nice foothold in the upgrades. Now, uh, what I do plan on making is steam engines to power everything. Like a, a rather large steam engine setup. Um, and that's what I think we're going to work on next episode. Is getting up the steam power and then starting to build the factory around this whole thing. Uh, like I said, these are temporary though. They're not going to stay here forever. Um, as once we get our power up, I guess we can start a sort of, uh, kind of formulate where we want all of these little, uh, contraptions to be. So guys, I hope you enjoyed today's episode as I tried my best to summarize some of the basic mechanics, honestly, of create this contraption, these like contraptions right here alone, uh, really summarizes some of the basic, uh, ways that you can utilize all of these individual pieces. It is kind of crazy how I was able to summarize almost all of the uh, the ways of moving things and uh, filtering things in, in just a small space. Um, but I, it's going to get a little bit more advanced next episode. So I hope you guys click that subscribe button so you guys can stay notified whenever I do publish my next video. Um, but guys, I think it's time to thank the supporter of today's video. Huge thanks is going to go to... Bob Otter, thank you so much for your amazing support, by the way, over on the Discord, becoming a Discord Premium member. And of course, uh, at times like these, when I do get sick and I have to take a few days off, uh, the supporters over there, uh, whether that's on Twitch, on Patreon, or on the Discord, 
um, all the supporters help to relieve the amount of stress that I go through when I'm not able to publish a video due to sickness or illness. So I do thank you guys so much for supporting. And uh, if you're interested in supporting yourself or you just want to join our amazing community over on Discord, you can find that at discord.gg forward slash chosen architect, or you can find me over on Twitch, twitch.tv forward slash chosen architect, where I do normally stream four days a week, Monday, Tuesday, Thursdays, and Fridays. So be sure to check that out. Give me a good old follow over there. Uh, of course, subscribe here. Give this video a thumbs up. Comment something down below if there's an interesting quirk then in create that you would like to see i would love to cover it in the next couple of episodes so be sure to let me know and of course guys i'll see you in the next one and as always thanks for watching